Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So we have the last round of payments starting to go out this week for social security beneficiaries before we have the increase the following month. So we'll be going over the payment schedule for that. Plus, how many Americans are exactly aware of just how much the government is completely fumbling the ball when it comes to their social security benefits? Well, it seems like quite a few of them are just completely unaware of what's going on, unfortunately. So I'll be covering a new poll with that as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive 20 free stocks from Webull, each stock is going to be worth at least $3. So it's going to be $60 in stocks or $60 plus in cash in which you can sell those stocks and then transfer that money right back to your bank account. This holiday season, perfect time to do it. In the pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link where you can receive just that. Okay, so diving right into the main content of today's video, we're gonna start out with a story uh, going on in the Senate. Once again, we have Republicans going against each other. We have J.D. Vance and Tom Tillis in complete disagreement over an issue that is funding to Ukraine. So according to The Hill, Senator Tom Tillis on Monday dug into Senator J.D. Vance's recent remarks against sending further aid to Ukraine, calling the Ohio Republicans' comments total and unmitigated BS. Vance, in an interview with former White House aide Steve Bannon earlier on Monday, claimed some lawmakers are looking to cut Social Security benefits for more aid to Ukraine that he argued will be used so one of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's ministers can, quote, buy a bigger yacht. When asked about Vance's remarks later on Monday, Tillis told reporters, quote, I think it's BS if you're talking about giving money to Ukrainian ministers, total and unmitigated BS, Tillis continued. Not productive conversation, not real happy about it. On Sunday, Vance reaffirmed his opposition to sending additional aid to Ukraine and said he does not believe Ukraine will ever be able to prevail over Russia. He argued that the U.S. needs to accept Ukraine will likely need to, quote, cede some territory to stop its fighting with Russia and question how billions in additional aid to Ukraine will help the war-torn country. Presented with Tillis' criticism later on Monday, Vance said he believes Ukraine is, quote, one of the most corrupt countries in Europe. He said, we know that a number of people have gotten rich in Ukraine, and I think it's naivety. If you don't think they've gotten rich with some of our money, Vance told reporters, maintaining that Tillis is, quote, one of his favorite colleagues. Vance said the North Carolina Republican is, quote, not living in reality. So, wow, well, what a uh, another fight going on, uh, infighting between uh, two Republicans there. But let me know in the comment section below, are you Team J.D. Vance or are you Team Tom Tillis? Do you think that we need to be giving additional aid to Ukraine? I think, you know, I I, I definitely think that Vance brings a great, uh, great uh, point to the conversation there. How much have we sent to Ukraine at this point in time? And it seems like this war between Ukraine and Russia just continues to go on and on. I don't know when the end is in sight. Is it going to go on for another year? Is it going to go on for another five years? Is it going to go on for another 20 years? And how much more money do we have to send to Ukraine over the next 20 years if this war just continues to go on? It's not really helping anybody. It's It might be enriching the presidents and those in power in the two countries receiving all this money and whatever else they're getting out of it, but their own citizens are the ones that are suffering. They're the ones going to war. They're the ones that are taking bullets. They're the ones in real danger here. So you have to question. I mean, personally, I, I think I definitely have to say I'm Team Vance here. He also brings up another point. I mean, even though we're not directly taking money from the Social Security Trust Fund and giving it to Ukraine, that's still $100 billion that we could help fund Social Security, make you know benefits more generous, maybe give that uh, help help uh, uh, employ more people uh, within the Social Security Administration. That way we're not on hold when we want to talk to someone for two or three hours. That $100 billion that we were sending over there and billions more to come, I'm sure over the next few years, certainly could be used a lot better here at home, at least in my opinion. So obviously, I, I you know regardless, I think you know the government is fumbling Social Security altogether. Once again, in 10 years, if nothing is done, 2033, possibly even earlier, if nothing is done to save the program, everyone receiving benefits is going to receive a cut of 20 to 25 percent. 
that would be absolutely devastating. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of Americans just aren't aware of the fact of how much the government is absolutely fumbling Social Security. The government makes it seem like the program is absolutely gloomy, that it's in great shape, that they're going to continue paying out benefits, that it's not going to go insolvent. No, it just doesn't happen to be the case. And we could look at this Gallup poll here. It says the majority of U.S. retirees expect to avoid a cut in Social Security benefits. So we have a blue line and we have a green line. The green line there at 53% says that they will continue to get full benefits. So we can see there that the majority of Americans think the program is in good shape, that it's not going to go insolvent. But in fact, we can see numerous studies out there that show absolutely, if nothing is done to fix the program, to bring in more money or send out less benefits, there is going to be a cut of 20 to 25%. It's definitely going to happen. So, I mean, lawmakers in Washington need to get their act together, perhaps instead of sending money to other countries and other things that, you know, padding the pockets of our own politicians, perhaps we should be using this money to fund Social Security and these other programs or these other things that are going to help our Americans out here at home. Are we, you know, are, are we as a country trying to help others in, in other countries? Or are we trying to help our people here at home? I mean, sure, if everyone here at home is in great shape, then I'm all for maybe helping people in other countries. But at this point in time, when we have a Social Security program that's going insolvent, when we have people on the streets that are homeless, when we have families and children that are going hungry, we should be taking care of our priorities here first at home and then later down the road, sure, consider sending hundreds of billions of dollars to other countries. Now, in some other news, of course, this week, actually starting tomorrow on Wednesday, we have the last round of payments going out for the 2023 year before we have that increase, thanks in part to the cost of living adjustment. So this, this month, once again, you're not going to see the increase. I know we heard about the news of the 3.2% cost of living adjustment back in October, and you did not receive it in November, and you're also not going to receive it in December unless you are on SSI. We're gonna be going over that in just a moment. So according to The Sun, COLA beneficiaries who were born before the 10th of the month will be the first to cash in their monthly payments on December 13th. So once again, it's gonna be between the first and the 10th, you're gonna be receiving uh, your payment tomorrow. If you're born on the first or the, uh, between the first and the 10th of any given month, you'll be receiving your payment tomorrow. It's gonna to be the normal payment that you've been receiving all year long. Then those with a birth date between the 11th and 20th will receive your check on December 20th. That's going to be the following Wednesday. While beneficiaries born after the 21st will claim their money on December 27th. So once again, December 13th, December 20th, and December 27th are the payments going out this month in December. December. Meanwhile, the 2024 COLA was announced on Oct in October as 3.2%, which means retirees will see an average monthly increase of $58 next month. And you can see the payment schedule up on the screen once again, December 13th, December 20th, and December 27th. But then on December 29th, if you're receiving SSI, you're going to actually receive another payment. Once again, you would have received a payment on the first of the month. On the, the payment on the first of the month would have been the same payment that you've been receiving all year long, 2023. But that payment on December 29th, you're going to notice it's going to be a little bit higher. It's going to be around 3.2% higher because of your cost of living adjustment. Then in January, if we look at the January 2024 schedule, we can see January 1st. That's when you would normally receive your payments if you're on SSI. But since you received the payment on December 29th, you're actually not going to be receiving any payment on January 1st. Instead, you're not going to receive another payment all the way until February. So your payment on December 29th is actually just going to be your January payment. Then on January 10th, we have payments going out to those born between the 1st and 10th of any given, of any given month. January 17th and January 24th, those are going to be the three dates in which payments are going out to Social Security beneficiaries. And those payments are going to be where you're going to see them a little bit higher. Once again, the 3.2% cost of living adjustment is going to come in play in January of next year. You're not going to see the increase in December. Once again, the increase is going to be coming next month in January. So that's all we have for today's video. Certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.